Russia is smart enough to respect game theory, whereas China, maybe not so much. That's why China got rid of their miners, because I think China leadership is very arrogant and they think they're above game theory. Russian leadership is very pragmatic and they see game theory playing out. They realize that what happened to the truckers in the centralized payment systems, to give one example, or to Julian Assange when they cut off from uh, MasterCard, Visa, and PayPal, or when they sanction Iran over the SWIFT system, they're like, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we have to create our own system for redundancy. And now, after a few years, they realize that, well, actually, now it's, it's obvious that Bitcoin in this winner-take-all, hard money, global race for perfect money is the winner. So we're adjusting our thinking, right? They're not ideologues. They're not dictators. They're not stupid. I mean, they go with the flow. And they see that Bitcoin is emerging as the world global reserve asset. And they're making adjustments accordingly. You know, it's the, the country has a lot of different constituents and they're all battling for a voice in the Kremlin. And, uh, you know, it's not it's not like the, the, the president can just write a dictate. It's not it's not what people perceive it to be. They have to go through a political process and they've been moving this political process along for a while. Obviously, on Kaiser Report, we've been talking about it for 10 years. We've never heard any word uh, ever suggesting we should stop talking about Bitcoin. That was my clue that there was light at the end of this tunnel, that it was all political nonsense. Because, And sure enough, I was right again. Right. So for on the, on the adoption of uh, different countries and also the comment about the early adopters benefit and the later adopters are not necessarily benefiting. I think that that deserves some comments because ultimately Bitcoin demonetizes war and monetizes peace. So we're all equally benefiting if we have global Bitcoinization by a world that love and peace have been monetized. And the actual orientation toward money, scarcity, hoarding, wealth is fundamentally changed. And I think that that's going to be a big bonus for our, our whole species, to, to be frank. Now, if you look at which countries are in line to adopt Bitcoin, you have Central America and Africa are the two most uh, active parts of the world. Central America, obviously, with El Salvador, uh, you have five countries in Central America. They're, they're talking to each other all the time. There's been a dream now for 150 years of unifying these five countries. Uh, that's now back in play. People are talking about it again. Bitcoin could be the standard for the entire region. Uh, we've got now uh, the billionaires in Mexico are promoting Bitcoin heavily. Mexico is in play. Argentina is in play with Strike is now in Argentina like they were in El Salvador. So Latin America, Central America, definitely Bitcoin adoption is exploding. And, and over in Africa, in Nigeria, you, you know, Ray over at Paxville has done an incredible job in orange pilling the entire continent, really. Uh, and that's spreading all, all over Africa, it's because the use case, well, Bitcoin in Africa is incredible. You know, these countries couldn't commerce with each other uh, before Bitcoin because uh, even though they might be two, two miles away, you couldn't do any commercial activity uh, with all these different countries because they were so balkanized financially. But, you know, imagine if you couldn't do business with New Jersey and New York and Connecticut and Long Island. They, you couldn't do business together because you were completely separate financial systems and different regulations. So Bitcoin breaks that apart. And, and, and for the continent of Africa, it's incredibly entrepreneurial. And now they've got perfect money. So we're going to see an incredible move there. So those are the two, the two biggest hot zones. As far as what's going on between Russia and Ukraine, you know, obviously... Uh, it, I, it's very similar to me to this recurring uh, pantomime where every six months or so we hear about the Fed is going to raise rates, right? For 25 years, the Fed's going to raise rates. And of course, they can't raise rates because you can't taper a Ponzi scheme. But people will always get all worried about, oh, they're going to raise rates. But and of course, now we're at the point now in that cycle where they're starting to say, Actually, we're, we think we might need to launch QE5. We might have to lower rates. Japan just actually did a massive QE program, as I understand it. So they're already engaged in QE. And on a net basis, the central banks 
have been continuing in their program of buying their own debt, uh, debt monetization globally at an extraordinary rate. So there's been no, uh, there's been no, uh, there's been no diminishment in the money printing and the QE at all. Uh, and that's, that never is going to change. Uh, be, and so Russia, Ukraine is similar. So here, I, I don't want to shock anybody with my real politique, but this is what actually happens. So you have QE and you have uh, money printing. And, and these are the primary ways that the dollar is debased. The cantillionaires become billionaires and cantillionaires. And America goes down the shithole, as we've seen now for since 1971, since we went off the gold standard. But there's another way that you can print lots of money. And that is you do this whole pantomime and, and fan dance with, oh, Russia is going to invade Ukraine. Oh, no! We need the Pentagon, which already gets 1.5 trillion of our tax dollars, 50 cents of every tax dollar. They say, send us another 200 billion today, or Russia's going to invade Ukraine. So they go, okay, you got it. And then that's just money printing. And then it never goes into the economy. It stays in the banks. They hoard the money. We know this because money velocity is at zero. So it's just more money printing. It's another bailout. The, the U.S. mainstream media is an extension of Raytheon and Boeing. They, they have no independence whatsoever. It's pure government-controlled media in America. There is no, except for Joe Rogan. And, of course, they need to get rid of Joe Rogan because he's the only independent voice in America. We need to shut him down because he, it, we, we can then see that Rachel Maddow is whoring for rocket de- sellers, for bond manufacturers, right? She's on TV exposing herself for, for, for weapons dealers, right? So that's just more bailouts. So it's bullshit. By, in the next two days, the whole thing's going to fizzle out, as it always does, and they'll have some other crisis. It'll be China. It'll be some new terrorist organization. It'll be, you know, whatever it is. It's the same script over and over again. It's like being trapped on Gilgan's Island for 30 years. The same cast, the same stories, the same stupid shit over and over and over again. At least write different stories. You're so boring. Exactly. It's so boring. Come up with some different propaganda. Don't give me the same propaganda every day. I mean, go to Hollywood, hire some writers, and get some good propaganda. You're so boring. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3,000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke. And you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof. To the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. 
This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.